Good morning, Brina. Hi, Karen. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. Hi, Glenda. How's everybody doing today? Hope you all are having a wonderful Wednesday. Our Wednesday is much more wonderful. We had to go get a little blood work drawn this morning for some little friend here. So, happily, that's over with. Hi, Eileen. Good morning, Yvonne from Washington. It's early in Washington, isn't it? 6.30, I'm guessing. Must be watching before work. Good morning, sunshine. Yes, it is. Good morning, ladies. Thank you all so much for joining. Hi, Trudy. I wanted to share a couple um, things with you before we get started today on the card we're going to be making, which I'm going to attempt making a um, no-line watercolor card. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Oh, how long? Oh, my goodness. Well, let me tell you, my Stampin' Scrub, I bought this. I didn't buy this at first because, you know, when I first started stamping, I, you know, I've only been a demo for two years, even though I've been a stamper for a long time, like 15 or 16 years. And um, 7.30 in Canada. There you go. Good morning, Cheryl. So I, I didn't buy this at first because I thought, I don't need that. Why do I need that? I don't. I just can wipe my images off. I don't need it. And then I realized I could make a lot more stamps faster if I didn't have to go back and forth and clean it. So I've had this for probably, I bet I've had it for about three or four years now. Oh, good morning. I'm glad it's warmer, Donna, at least. I've had it for about three or four years. And I haven't noticed, I mean, I notice that, you know, every once in a while you'll have like a little string hanging off the end. But um, I think it lasts pretty long considering I actually, also someone gave me a, um, they were getting rid of some of their stamp stuff. Oh, the horror. Can you believe who would get rid of stamp stuff? They actually gave me one that is the older one. It's more like a rectangle. That one, I'll say, is it, the pile isn't as deep on it as this one is. I think this the newer version is a little bit nicer. But, I mean, I think they last a pretty long time. I did have one that was a cheapo version. It was, like, on a foam mat, and it was loose. That one didn't last nearly as long. I noticed there was always little black pieces coming off. That one was, I think, one from, like, Michael's or something like that. But, um, oh, you have beautiful sunshine. I am very jealous. <laughs> we have, like, just beginning sunshine, but we did have a beautiful day yesterday. And thank you guys for sharing. You're receiving your stamper ads today. Okay, so let me just tell you, especially because Donna asked, and Donna brought up a few good points. So I know a lot of people have asked me in the past few videos that I've done, why do I not stamp in the corner? Well, let me tell you why I don't stamp in the corner. Number one. I have only had this since um, Friday. Can you believe I got extra fast shipping and I didn't use it until Sunday, which is, I know, shocking. But I have used a Misty prior to this. So going from a Misty, which you guys know has a ledge on the side, and this one doesn't, it is a little bit of an adjustment. So if you have a Misty or a Tim Holtz or whatever the other ones may be, I know there's a lot of them out there, and you get a Stamparatus, it is going to be different to, to get adjusted to. So you do need to keep that in mind because it's not the same. It's open. And the reason they kept it open was so if you wanted to make bigger sheets. So say, for example, you had a scrapbook page, right? And this is 7 by 7 So you would still have to do it kind of in sections. But theoretically, you could stamp your own background for a scrapbook page. So you could get white 12 by 12 and you could make it completely full. Like if you wanted to do one, say you were on vacation in Florida and you wanted to fill the background with very soft colored flamingos, right? You could do that. You could fill the whole thing. You would have to make them so they were going different directions, which is, you know, a lot of times they do that on, on designer series paper and on scrapbook pages, but they kept it open-ended. So it was bigger usability space as opposed to having this ledge where you have to fit everything in. Now, with that being said, you have to have a little bit of an adjustment period of how you're going to put your card in. So I did just stamp this in the corner here. And you can stamp things in the corner. I just have kind of gotten to the point where I worked around with stamping. Because I kind of imagine I'm not always going to make things in the corner. So that's why I suggested if you're doing something to kind of let yourself get used to it in whatever way you want to do. And granted, you probably want to have a... A cleaner piece of paper when you start but you might not always make things up in the corner if you're gonna make something bigger like say for example you wanted to make someone a five by seven card I'm just gonna grab a piece of paper and just trim this out so if you wanted to make someone a five by seven card because you were just feeling 
fancy and you wanted to send someone a larger card, so we'll go with this with the seven, you're probably not necessarily, and I know this is a, just a sheet, so you would have to adhere it to something else, but you're probably not necessarily going to stick it in the quarter because what if you want to do something bigger and you want to do like a whole a whole flower layout that you're just going to cover this with flowers, you're going to cover it with dragonflies, you're not going to probably put it in the corner because you're wanna, going to want to move it around. So there may be instances when you do want to move your cardstock out of the corner. Maybe you'll start it in the corner. Maybe you'll move it over. So I was simply suggesting if you're going to do something where you're going to want to move things around, and I have seen other people do this, not even with a Stamparatus, with other stamping tools as well, that you can always make yourself a corner mark so you can make a corner mark where this is going to go where your corner is just that way if you decide to change it around you have a reference point of where you can put your card in if you're not necessarily doing something that's going to be up in the corner so it kind of depends however you can stamp in the corner but I will tell you what I have noticed is on the Stamparatus, it does have this little grid pattern in here if you guys have gotten yours yet and you see it it is a little difficult to see you can kind of see it on the angle there and I will tell you from my experiences, you don't want to put your stamps so they're out of this because it is very hard to get something to connect enough pressure all the way up in the corner here. Okay. And that's probably with anything because I know I have had that issue with the Misty before. If you are in the, the corner where the, um, the hinge window is, you can't really stamp there as well either. So it's kind of the same thing. Now this one, I just have this direction, but say if you went this way. So say you were going to stamp, you were going to stamp to the left. So you're going to have your card stock over here. Same thing. So kind of when you get up high in this corner here, like the 90 degree angle, it's not going to make as much connection. This one did, I did fully ink this and I can absolutely flip it over and show you guys again. Um, I did have to re-ink it and at one point I did move my magnet around because the magnet was down here. So the tail is very tiny. So it wasn't making as much of a connection as it should with the stamp and the paper but all I did was I took my mark uh, my magnet I keep calling this markers I put my magnet from down here and then I just re-inked it and moved it up top that way it was out of the way for the tail so you absolutely can stamp you just can't stamp in like the high 90 degree corner of this probably same thing down here you can't stamp in the low 90 not like you would stamp over here on the edge anyway but it, it is it's different so you just have to keep that in mind when you're doing this. It's not going to work the same as a Misty. It's not going to work the same as probably Tim Holtz, even though I don't really know exactly what that one looks like, because it's not the same thing, because you do have other options with it. So just remember that when you're trying to use it. And again, any new tool that you're going to use is going to be a little bit frustrating because you'll be like, well, when I had the such and such, it was easy. But this isn't the such and such. This is the Stamparatus. So you just have to give yourself some time and practice. And again, I've only, I haven't even had it for a week. So I haven't done everything that I want to do with it thus far. And I did want to do some more um, like 101 videos on how to do re-inking on something. How to do double heat embossing. But with using that with the other device, I kind of had it figured out. This is different. So it's just taking me a little bit more to do all these videos that I want to share with you guys. However, I will tell you this. There's a lot of really fun stuff that I want to do. And there's a lot of fun stuff that I haven't done yet. And plus, if I do it all once, then you're not going to want to come back and watch me anymore. So we kind of have to spread it out a little bit. But what someone asked for, and again, this is really, you know, when I do all these videos with you guys, I love taking your suggestions on what kind of card you want on um, what you want to see done, on what you want to explain further. I really do love that because for me, it makes it very interactive with making you guys happy and doing something that you like instead of being like, great, she's making the same card again. But also when I do it, I do it for the first time because you're going to do it for the first time. So for me, if I'm doing it with you for the first time, I'm hoping it helps us to like work out the kinks of, okay, well, remember when you did that last time, it didn't work. So how about it will skip that step? And I'm just hoping it saves you time, money, and energy in having to not do something the wrong way and make my mistake. If we can make it together here with you just watching and then say, okay, here's a note. Don't do that. Or make sure I don't buy this because I don't need it. So anyway, I'm hoping that I help you guys with that. That really is my goal. I do love making cards. I love making card videos, but I also love making you guys happy because I do these, you know, I did them in the beginning just because I was making cards anyway, so I might as well make videos. But now that everybody's watching, I'll be happy to make you happy. So if there's something you want to see, you know, you can either put a comment on here. I kind of have a list of things that I do. You can feel free to send me a PM. You can send me an email. Um, 
and I'll be happy to make whatever it is you guys want to see. So what we're going to do is we are, I just stamped the um, dragonfly just to show you. There's a couple different ways we could do this no line, no line uh, watercoloring. And basically what that is, is you're making this kind of disappear. So whenever you do something with the no line watercoloring, you want to have a light image. Now this one was actually in, is this one Sahara sand? I think this one was Sahara sand because I did one earlier in crumb cake. No, this is crumb cake. It was a little bit darker, but you want to do something that's going to kind of fade into the background when you do it. So powder pink is a good one, except it's a little too pinky. So if you wanted to do something also to fade, you could either do, um, like, a uh, blush, not, not even blushing bright, pink pirouette, because this is going to kind of disappear depending on what color inks you're going to co cover over it with. And um, powder pink's got a little bit more depth of color, if that makes sense. Even though it looks kind of more fady, it does show up more intense when you stamp with it. So you want to use something that's going to kind of fade into the background. You probably could also use soft sky because this is a fairly light color. But you want to use a light color that'll fade into the background of whatever you're coloring it with. So again, I've not done this before, so we're going to um, get well cards. Yeah, definitely, Kathleen, I agree with you. Sm I was thinking, Donna, Smoky Slate could be a good option um, if you only did it once. So we'll figure out together what we're gonna do. I thought we could either do um, Lovely as a Tree using the Big Oak Tree. That would be a really good one, that would fade. But again, you kinda want something that you're gonna fill in the color. The flower from The Amazing You. Now the flower part would be good. This would be a little bit darker. So you got to remember, this is going to stamp. So you might only want to ink up the image. Uh, what's another? The truck. This would be a great one to do. Because you could completely make the truck or the guitar, e either of these. You could make any of these disappear. And then I just kind of grabbed a couple other things that had good sentiments. The Hello Friend. Um, the Flamingo. You could do the Lighthouse only the outline of it, and then you could fill that in. That would be a really good one to do. And then I just, again, I just grabbed a bunch of things that had some really nice sentiments in them. Yeah, I think that's about it. These are from when I did one the other day. So let me move all these out of the way, and I'm going to see. We can either go with doing the truck or the tree. And I had another one that I wanted originally to do but darn it I can't remember which one it was but you want something that's got a fairly good image so again oak tree or the truck y'all decide and we'll pick one and then we'll go from there we'll stamp the image up again I'm going to tell you though this I've not done this before so it you know might be a little bit of a work in progress I do have um a board that I'm going to tape it to just to do the watercoloring to kind of cut down on the wrinkling of the paper. Now I just grabbed my old palette because I thought I ordered a hard board, but it hasn't come in. So I'm going to just tape whatever watercolor paper we do down to the oak tree. I see a lot of oak trees and trucks. All right. I'm going to keep watching. We're going to tape it to this and you could use a hard board if you have one, or you could tape it to like a stamping platform, truck, truck, oh, tree. Oh, it's like 50, 50 thus far. We might have to just do both. <laughs> we'll do the truck first and then we can make the tree our learning experience on what not what 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 didn't work and what will work. Alright, I'm still watching. I'll give you like three more things and we'll figure out what we're gonna start with. I think so far the truck is winning. Truck, yep. Truck looks like it's winning. Both, Donna. Exactly. There she is. <laughs> Donna, you need to uh drive over here and you can help me. We can have dual stamping. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do the truck first. Do the truck first, and then we'll go back and do something small with the tree. Okay, so what we're going to do first is I am going to, um, I'm going to show you just the stamping in the corner, just so you can see. This is regular Whisper White, so we don't want to use this. I would suggest either to use thick Whisper White or watercolor paper, um, you know, kind of either is your choice. I do have a piece of thick Whisper White, so I'm going to just stamp onto this with the truck. And the truck, this will be a good one to show you. This is a clear mount stamp. So when we do this, we're actually going to take this foam out, out of the stamparatus because we don't need that for the clear. I'm going to just set that on the side for a moment. And I'm going to stick this up here in the corner. And if you notice, of course, I seem to have misplaced one since. I did put some, um, some 3M 
painter's tape onto my magnets and this makes them much easier to pull up than to kind of dig with your fingers. So I just kind of wrapped it all the way around. This was a little wider than I wanted, but it was the quickest one I could grab in the basement since we were getting ready to start. <laughs> and then what you can do is you can still keep this on when you pull them off and it'll make it easier to get them off of the bottom. So they'll go on there really easily, okay? All right, so let me go back to, I'm right-handed, so we'll go this way. Decide what we're gonna do here. Oops, got a lot of, a lot of stuff to fight with up there. So I'm gonna just kind of decide where I want my truck. So I'm gonna just kind of set it, we'll say like, it's not up in the corner. Kind of off to the side, that way I can put my sentiment up top if I wanted to. And this paper is slightly bigger. It's not uh, four and a quarter by five and a, it's not four by five and a quarter. It's still full size. So we might have to trim this down anyway. So you just close your lid. And then this was the other part where I was saying if you wanted to, you could take a piece of your painter's tape. And this is just, you know, I've seen people do this with different stuff. It really is just your preference. You don't have to do any of this. You do whatever you want to do, but just suggestions. If it's easier for you, you could grab a piece of this, make it a little bit smaller and just make yourself a little pool tab. So you could stick this right here, kind of really on the edge. That way, if you wanted to make it easier to lift this, if you can see that on there. But again, that's just an optional thing for you to do. This is also great for um, masking. If you want to mask, if you can't get something to stick and you don't want to use paint, um, post-it notes or washi tape, this is really good for masking because it's sticky, but it's not too sticky. It won't damage your stamps. So we closed our window and we have our truck on there. And what I'm going to do is we'll do it first with smoky slate. Okay. We'll see how that works. I'm not going to over ink it. So this is a pretty juicy foam pad. Um, if you had a linen pad and you're doing this, you do want to make sure that it's inked enough that you can only do it maybe once because you don't want this to be too dark because then it makes it a little more difficult to get the, the no line part to disappear. So we're gonna just put this on just like that and press. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, pretty good inking, okay. So I'm gonna put this over here for a moment. I do wanna dry this, okay? So you do wanna make sure that is one of the big things that you have to do when you're doing the no line stamping is you wanna make sure that you have a dry image or else it's gonna blur, or not blur, smudge the images, which you don't wanna smudge. Let me put these back under here for now. And this is pretty easy to store. Again, you do wanna take your plates off. You don't wanna fold both of them down because it can damage your plates. So you can take both of them off and just nest it in, set this on the side somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just hit this just for a moment with the heat tool just to make sure that it's dry, okay? And um, I am not an artist by any measure, but I've played one on TV, just kidding. I've watched a lot of videos. I would like to be an artist, but I'm only good at drawing stick figures. But I will tell you that um, the key apparently when you are doing this is to make sure that you have everything dry in between. So either have some paper towels to like absorb the extra ink with, have your heat tool so you can dry it. You wanna dry it in between adding the colors. That is the key. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just tape this down to this hard board. And this is gonna essentially just prevent your paper from getting extremely warped because watercolor does make um, make it difficult for this to stay down. I'm going to just tear this in half since it's so big. So we're going to just, don't mind my hole there. This is actually my uncle's um, paint board. He is an incredibly talented man. And um, when he passed away, my mom gave me this. And it's funny, hold on, this is just a little bit just a little squiggly. I just want to pick it up so it, when you have a normal hard board, it doesn't, it has a, um, not a rough side. This is really smooth. So really it should be on the other side, but since it's kind of bumpy, that's why I flipped over. When you have a normal hard board, it's very easy to take, put the tape onto and take it off of. But anyway, so when he passed away, my mom asked me if I wanted all this stuff and she gave me all these, um, watercolors and things of his which again, at the time, I really didn't know anything about watercoloring. 
So I was like, well, these are all dried up. I guess I'll throw them away. And now, apparently, I realize that watercolor can be reactivated, kind of like the brush show. So you can reactivate it. So all that stuff I probably could have used and already threw it away. Sadly. All right. So I have um, aqua painters here. I have paper towels. And what we're going to do is we will start with... How about we'll start with the brush show? Okay, we'll start with some brush show. I just have like a little thing here where I could add some dots into it. We'll start with the brush show and we'll see how that works. We can certainly add in a few um, ink colors. We can try that. I've not done that before, so we'll see how it is. So I'm going to put these into the little pot. So I have a little bit of the orange. And I do give these a good shake before I pull the pins out. Yes, it's Thick Whisper White. Thank you, guys. Um, this is the blue, Prussian blue. We have red. I'm probably putting more in there in that than I need, but we'll see how it goes as we do it. A little bit of yellow. You want to use Thick Whisper White if you're going to watercolor, or you could use watercolor paper, but I just grabbed Thick Whisper White because it was closer. And then some of the green. And also remember, you can, you know, I know there's only five colors that come with the brush show. You can mix these together to get different colors. So these are five good starter colors. If you wanted to darken it, you know, you could add the different colors to each other. You could do uh, red and blue as purple. You could do um, yellow and blue if you wanted to make a different green than this green and just add more or less of the color. Now, normally when you do water coloring, what you do is you kind of wet the whole paper, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to make this ink run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wet these little pools that I've made here. I'm just going to put some drops in. And so I just added just some drops to these and I'm going to just mix them up. Okay, just like that. And what we're going to do is I'm going to just start with the red since I picked that one up first. Okay, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to make the lines on this disappear. And I'm not 100% sure how well it's going to go because of using the the darker. might have had to use maybe a uh, a darker color to start with. And again, you do need to remember that this is just thick whisper white it's not really watercolor so it's going to look different depending on what kind of a, a paper you do it on and we can always add in if we want to like a little bit of dark or something around the edges there I'm just going to do this other part of the fender here a little bit lighter do the back one a little bit lighter and then what we could do is we could actually add in a little bit of um, green. I'll do the door while I'm at it too. And we could kind of make it more of like a rusty color. So I'm kind of staying like somewhat in the lines for this first part here. And working my way out. So I kind of did the darker parts first. And then the lighter parts. I'm going to steer clear of the window. Right like that. Okay. So let me just fill in right up here just a little bit again and when you have these um, aqua painters you do have two different tips so the longer one is a little bit more difficult this one is a little bit more difficult to control so if you find that you're going over the edges too much just switch out and use your smaller okay so this one has a much smaller tip to it you have much more control with a much smaller tip okay just remember that and thank you all for joining. Thanks all for the sharing and everything. I really appreciate that. So what I'm doing with this is I'm just cleaning this one out to the edge. And I just realized this one is almost out of water, of course. Of course it is. So I'm going to just fill this really quickly from the other one. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, let me get my arm out of the way. All right, that's going to be good enough. I got this um, crazy, <laughs> it's kind of similar to the aqua painter that came with these watercolors that I bought, but the, the, the tip screws on backwards, which is very confusing. <laughs> so I was squeezing it on and I'm like, I couldn't get it to stay on. I didn't realize it was because you have to do it the other way. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a little bit of the blue and I'm going to add just a little bit more water to this. So it's a little bit lighter. I'm going to put a little bit over here. 
and I'm going to get just a teeny bit of the red and mix it just so it's a little bit darker. And I'm going to kind of bring this in again on just the edges. So I don't know what this is going to look like. It is lifting up just a little bit off the paper, but we'll see what it looks like here. Just going over these again. Since this is a little wet, I'm going to just hit it with the heat tool just to dry it. This will kind of shrink the paper back, flatten it back down again. My grandfather actually used to have a, um, a kind of a purple truck like this. We had a, my grandparents had a house in Western Maryland that we used to go to in the summer and he had this purple truck and I always remember it was always in the wood because that's how he would go up and get his firewood out of the woods. And it was the craziest color purple for a truck. I remember that. It was always the most unusual color. And for the longest time, he would only use it for, you know, whatever he was going up there for. To get some wood or whatever the case may be. I'm going to bring this in just a little bit. It's funny how those memories come back to you when you, you least think about them. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have even thought about that truck for a while. But this truck reminds me of it every time. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, real quickly, I'm going to clean off, actually, let me just do the, the grill, just so it's a lighter shade. So I'm going to clean off my brush, and I'm going to do the windows. So I'm going to do the windows and the lights, and I'm going to try to make it a really, really light, 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 light blue if I can. So I'm going to start kind of on the far side. There we go. Just that way you can kind of see like the illusion of the glass. Same thing here. A little bit more I want to do the headlights. Just so they have that little shine to them. Okay, so we'll let that go for a minute. You can also do the background of this. You could do the, um, you know, like the sky. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is, which one is my green here? I'm going to add a little bit more to color to this because it's a little bit more yellow than I want, which this green does have some different colored crystals in it. So it's kind of like almost every time you do it, it's just the tiniest bit different color because it's a moss green. It's not really a dark green. So if you wanted to, you could always add also a little bit of blue in there if you wanted to make it a little bit darker of a green. Or you could mix the yellow and the blue to make your own green. So we're just going to add a little grass down here at the bottom. And this also could look completely different if you were doing this with um, watercolors versus um, the Stampin' or the ink, ink pads, which I haven't done it with that either. So I'm just going to kind of make this just kind of fade out to the ground. So we have like a little bit of ground underneath of it. So this is kind of just with whatever is left in the brush just to give that ground feel. And you can take a teeny bit and kind of give yourself like a you wanted to like a little horizon line add a little bit of spike in there it really just depends on what you want to do with it just remember that this card is going to be probably different every single time you do it and with doing this kind of thing to me it's a little bit more like real art because you have to think every time you want to do something or change it so I'm going to heat it again just to dry it a little bit late Fran you might not be late Facebook is crazy. It probably just didn't tell you I was on, which isn't surprising. All right. In the meantime, so the other thing I'm going to do, just while I'm letting the truck dry a little bit, because we want to add the rest of the wood and, you know, the other stuff to the bottom is, I'm going to go ahead and try to do a little bit of sky. But I want to make this super, um, super washed out if I can, because I don't want it to be too dark. So I'm just taking some blue and adding a lot of water to it so it's very very washed out so I'm gonna start kinda down here at the bottom where it would be a little bit darker just going up to the top same thing again I'm gonna start over here kinda where the horizon would be and going up to the top you could certainly omit this if you didn't want to but I think it kinda gives it a little bit more of a feel to the card since it's got that coloring around it depending on how far down you want your sky to go. 
And then you can always add green back up if you wanted to blend them together a little bit more. So I'm kind of going to just the edge of the truck. I'm trying my best not to touch it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in a little bit more with the green and just add just a little bit of something down here at the bottom, like a little bit of brush. That's the cool thing about watercolor is you can kind of, I don't, best thing to say is like merge it together. So it kind of looks merged together. looks like this truck really is just sitting in this field where it's been for a while. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, some of the blue and I'm going to add it to the green to try to get more of a like a dark tire color. So it's kind of like a muddy blue-black. I'm sorry, a muddy blue, blue-green. So I'm going to just bring this in. It is pretty dark. It de definitely doesn't look black at this point, just so you know. But it's definitely a darker green than it was. And actually, this blue is almost so concentrated, you could technically make it into black. There you go. That's definitely a lot more blue. And we're going to try to add that back in. That kind of just looks, ugh, I don't like the way that turned out. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> and I have the tire underneath it here that I'm going to add in, just so it's barely sitting there. But again, well, it was all good until I added the tires. Now I don't like it anymore. Let me heat it up a little bit. Maybe we're going to have to add so our sentiment covers the tires. That might be a good idea. <laughs> all right, and so I'm going to just bleed out my brush again just to get that green out, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch tips real quick because this one has much more water in it. So I'm just taking... The short tip off and I'm putting it onto my full pen which is the good thing about having the aqua painters because there are two so if one of yours runs out of uh, water you can just swap them out okay so then I'm gonna add in let's see I think we have the orange and the yellow I'm gonna add a little bit of the blue into the orange and the yellow and then I'm gonna just go over this wood. Okay, and I'm gonna get just a little bit of green and bring it in. Uh, and it has like that old mossy wood effect to it there. And remember with watercoloring, it doesn't really stay in the line. So if it doesn't, this is like a little box here. That's why I kind of kept that separate. If it doesn't stay in, that's kind of what it's supposed to do. Kind of not blend. And this could end up being a completely different looking card with the tree. So if you're not liking it thus far, hang in there. A little bit more. That was the tire underneath of there. Mm. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to add, if I can, just a teeny bit of this orange to the headlight, just a little. And now, so you could kind of take your towel and pick it up. Okay, same thing. So color something in. This is definitely a very colorful truck, I will say that much. <laughs> Bring that in just a little. Kind of have that brassy, rusty finish to it. And then one other thing we have to remember, and I'm going to wait, I'm going to take a, a picture as soon as we're done this Facebook Live, and then I'm going to take another one um, later on, because watercoloring does tend to change once it's dry. That is one thing you definitely need to keep in mind, okay? It's kind of looking like a Ronald McDonald truck right now, honestly. It definitely will look different once it is dry. So if you don't like it before you really are like, yeah, that is not my favorite thing, let it dry. So I'm going to hit this with the heat tool. Let it dry, set it aside. And also water coloring that has just air dried versus heat drying looks completely different. Okay? So remember right now I'm going to tell you this isn't my favorite but we're going to set this one aside and we're going to do the tree okay so what I'm going to do really quickly is let me just grab a wipe I'm going to wipe out this whole 
brush container here. And I'm going to just use this with a baby wipe. So I'm just going to pick up all the color, which is the good thing about this. This I think I just got it like, I don't know, Michael's or Joann's or something. It was probably like 59 cents. I'll grab one more. So it's just a reusable tray. You can add your inks back to it. You could rinse it in the sink if you wanted to, but since I'm not that close to a sink, that's why I'm just wiping it out. So you're going to just wipe this out perfectly clean. Grab your little old dish towel, tea towel, and just wipe it out. So now you can use this again, use it over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off, even though it's not fully dry yet. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to set this on the side and we will do our tree and see how that looks instead. And again, if you had a different hardboard, this is going to come off much easier. Okay. So we're going to set this on the side for now. Now this time I'm going to do the tree and I'm actually going to do the tree onto watercolor um, paper. Okay. Let me set this over here just for a second. So I have my watercolor paper. Um, Stampin' Up! Does, this, does sell this. I'm going to just trim off a, a smaller piece because I don't really want a, a huge card for this. We could kind of make this more into a note card because it is a little bit with the, the tree. So I have it cut three inches. We'll do three, three by four because this could be something we could add to a card front, like maybe with the wood, wood paper background or whatever. So let me set this on the side. Go ahead and grab this. Here's the Stamparatus again. I'm going to take this off and move it. I'm going to take out my foam because this is also a, um, a cling mount stamp. Just set this back in here. Need a bigger desk. All right, and let me grab my tree. Okay, so now we have the Lovely as a Tree. This, um, again, does have a good amount of detail to it. So if you ever are having trouble with looking at the image or figuring out exactly what you want to paint, I usually keep this out so I can see exactly what it looks like because it kind of gives me a better idea of where exactly I want to stamp, okay? Or what I want to color, I should say. So I'm going to put this kind of up in the corner and we're going to paint, we're going to stamp, I should say, right here. So I'm going to grab this. I forgot my magnet. Pull that out real quick. Put this up at the top make sure that's still where I want it okay now this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this with um, crumb cake okay this is a linen pad and I noticed earlier when I stamped that dragonfly it wasn't super inky so I did re-ink this re-ink this so I'm gonna just stamp it lightly I don't want it to be too dark because again we're trying to get this to disappear into the painting or well, the painting that we're going to do so I'm gonna just press this down I'm keep my ink pad here just in case I missed a spot. And again, this is like just a hair over that grid line that I was telling you guys about. Let's see what it looks like. It's pretty good. Let me just try the center. Just one more spot. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out. Pull this off. I'll move this out of the way. Move this over. And I want to just hit this with my heat tool just again to get it to dry some, okay? Because we want to try to make this tree part disappear. Now, this one is on watercolor paper, so it probably will react a little bit differently. I'm going to do both sides just to try to keep it a little flatter. And honestly, if you wanted to, instead of using the Stamparatus, what you could do is you could just ink this while you have it you could stamp it i should say while you have it on your hardboard that way you're assured that it's going to be flat so i'm going to do the same thing again i'm just going to take some of this tape just rip it in half and i'm going to try to keep this one with a little bit tinier of a border just like that two more little pieces and now this one, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use watercolors for this, okay? I just recently ordered a set. This is just a cheap set that I got on um, Amazon. Any watercolors would probably work. I'm not 100% sure about um, doing with the, this with the inks. 
again, just because I haven't really watercolored that much. So bear with me. So this was just a color uh, set that I got on Amazon, like I said, and you can, it has a tray so you can keep your, um, your inks in it and re-ink them if you wanted to. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm not sure if Stampin' Up! ever had watercolors. I'm sure they probably did a long time ago. It was probably in the time when I was either too busy being a 30 or 20 year old or when Christian was very young and I stopped stamping for a little bit. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to just um, wet some of the colors here and I'm going to bring it up. Again, I'm using just my aqua painter. And let's say bring a little bit darker of a brown. Okay, so I'm going to do the trunk first. And then the same thing again, though, when you're doing this, is you want to make sure that you have your paper towel so you can clean whatever it is onto that you're using. You want to make sure you have your heat tool handy because you are going to need to dry these off in between. Well, I thought that was brown, and that was, I don't know what color that was. That was like a blue. I'm going to heat this just to dry it. Do a little bit more of that lighter color. And then I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to start with a lighter green. Because you can always, as you can see from the bottom here, you can always add a darker green but you can't take it away. So we're just gonna start with just a lighter green color. This is probably close, kind of like a cross between a lemon lime twist and a pear pizzazz. Cause it's not quite as bright, but it is pretty soft. Add that in. And what I, what I think the no line watercoloring theory is, is it basically kind of gives you a starting point instead of you just saying, hmm, I really want to paint a tree today, but I don't really know how to paint a tree. That'll be my guess anyway, because I'm not very good at doing things um, free handed. I think I would like to think I am, and it just doesn't work out that way. There are just some people that have a really great creative side that they could just look at something and make an incredible piece of beauty out of it from nothing. But I kind of need a little starting point myself. All right, so I'm going to add just a teeny bit of like an orange to this. Just so it has like a little bit of depth of color. And again, because I am kind of limited as to what color these are, I'm going to add a little bit of brown to my green. Now I will say this one probably disappeared a lot better than the truck. I'm gonna do the same thing with the background here. So just, and the other thing is too, you have to give yourself a little bit to be able to play around with these brushes because they definitely are really very, very good for adding different, um, not really even textures, but just depth to. But you just have to give yourself the leniency to be like okay so I'll just work with it that I mean the grass on that to me looks amazing the grass looks great on that the tree looks pretty good probably could look a little better and actually the trunk I think I like better than when I started so I'm gonna just heat this up just to dry it before we start the sky And there are so many different ways to do so many different techniques. There's things that every day I learn something, I'm like, oh my gosh, I never even knew that existed before. So I'm going to just do a little bit of blue. Add a little bit of purple to that to make it a little bit deeper of a blue. There is a really um, beautiful technique that I've seen that I've yet to try myself. I'm going to bring this down the bottom a little bit to start. Just so I can kind of fade it out a little bit more to the top. I saw a really cool technique where someone made a um, a night sky, and I am bringing this into the leaves of the, the tree so it kind of disappears. This one was, I will say, 
a really good one for disappearing because you can barely see the stamping underneath of there now. But what they did is they did like a galaxy at night and then they flicked some white onto it and kind of did just like an outer, oh my gosh, it's so cool. So that's one I definitely think would be a lot easier to do just as like a plain background only because it didn't have any detail in it. So no trees or anything that you had to, I'm going to bring a little bit darker around the tree. So nothing that you had to really define. It was kind of just like the night sky, which was, it was definitely really pretty. And again, when I'm doing this, this is a little bit darker than I wanted. So I'm going to bring this down to the bottom. Like a sunset-y kind of thing. The sky is dark. And I'm going to clean it off a little bit on my wipe. There you go. If you don't like it, here's what you do. You take your paper towel and you just lift some of the color off of it. So it totally made that lighter than it was. But this is a good, again, I am squeezing the water, but not too much. I'm kind of trying more so to just dilute it as I go along. And then if I don't like it, just take the towel and lift some of that color off and just blend it together. This one really looks like no line watercoloring to me, way more than the truck. And it could just be the ink choice at this point because this started with a much lighter ink. Just bring a little bit at the bottom here. And I'm going to bring a little bit more, take that, a little bit more um, brown on the tree. So let me just clean off my watercolor pen here. And gosh, what is a brown? I can't even tell which is a brown with this. I thought I did. That one definitely looks blue. Let's see. All right, here's a brown. I'm going to just dry this just a little bit before I go back with the brown. Okay. Just add this just like, just a little bit to the side. Just to kind of give it that, like this is the darker side of the tree. And we'll just bring a little bit in for the root. bring this up into the tree a little bit if you wanted to just pick it up again same thing with the green if you wanted to you could add a little bit more and just clean this brush off I'm gonna add a little bit more just a grass edge to it and then I think we'll be done with this and we'll go back and look and see what our other um, what our truck end up looking like just to fill in the white a little bit this would be a cool one, though, to do if you wanted to do the tree and then do the background like a night sky, and then you could flick some stars into it. That would be really cool because you could do that with the Craft White ink, which would be really pretty. Let me see. Was I going for dark green? Let me just get just a little bit of this and see what this looks like. Okay, I'll just put a little bit more of the green here, just a little bit into the tree. Okay. I think that's good. I don't want to over fiddle because then I'm going to end up not ruining it, but being mad at myself for keeping going. Okay. So I'm going to just dry this just a little bit. Okay. So there you go. This is what this looks like. I'm trying to make it so straight since it's not straight on there. This has virtually disappeared. So the image that this looked like, as you can see, pretty good. You can't see any detail there except your tree. So this would be great. Um, Father's Day card, a get well card. I know someone mentioned earlier, like a get well card or sympathy card, Father's Day card, um, a male birthday, something or other. Uh, if you have a card for someone who maybe has been just going through something and they feel like they're alone, you could do this for the front and then write something really beautiful on the inside. So I really like this one. I think it disappeared well. And again, we use the crumb cake for this. So I'm not sure what time it is. It's 10.20. Gosh, we've almost been on here for an hour, so I don't want to keep you guys too much longer. Here's what the truck looks like. Now, the truck is fairly dry, so I'm going to bring this up just so you can see both of these together. Make sure they're in the same line there. So this is um, very well dried. The colors are a little weird, but again, this was with Brusho. Probably could do this with um, the crumb cake. You know what I'm going to do real quick? I'm going to do this with the crumb cake, and I'm going to color this with the dapper denim just to see what it looks like, just for kicks and giggles because... I can't leave well enough alone. And then we'll get off of here. So let me see where did I tape this one down. I don't want to rip this now that I've done it. 
So what we could do with this, and again, I'm going to let this dry fully before I adhere it to something, but I will take pictures of this later and I will post it onto this post and I will post it onto the blog. So I will take pictures of these kind of right away and then I'll take pictures of them again later so you can see how different they look. But this one looks pretty cool because it is framed. If you didn't like the framed look, you could rip it so it was like a torn image, which would be really pretty. Same with this one, you could do the same thing. I wanna stamp this one more time. I'm gonna do it on watercolor paper and I'm gonna do the truck in crumb cake. Just start it a little bit and then I will show you guys later on what it ends up looking like fully finished. Let me just trim a piece of this just real quickly. And I'm gonna do this um, a little bit different. So I'm gonna do this three inches, I think should fit the truck. Yeah, that's pretty good. Three, and we'll do this one, same thing. Three by four. And instead, I'm going to tape this down, stamp it, and then do it. And I'll try to be as quick as I can, because I'm sure you guys only have so long of an attention span. You have other things you have to do during the day, and I don't want to keep you forever. But really, if I did my videos, this is probably how they would end up turning out, that they would take 27 years to get done. You'd be like, enough already, Rachel. All right, so I'm going to tape this down, just making just a small border. And let's see. And I am using the straight edge just so it kind of has a clean border, even though it may not necessarily match. It's a cleaner border. So let's see which one this is going to fit on. Put this on here real quick. Wipe this off. This has the smoky slate ink on it. Okay. And I'm going to ink this up crumb cake. I don't want it to be too dark. So we're just going to do it however it is, crumb cake. I'm going to line it up. Hopefully it'll be mostly on there. This one's going to have way less grass because the way I cut it close and I did not stamp it directly. Okay, so we're going to leave that how it is. And I'm going to do this with Dapper Denim. Okay, so I'm just going to use the Dapper Denim pad. Do you want to hit this real quick with the drying tool, the heat tool? You watch me every day. Huh. Well, Donna, I actually might be live again tomorrow. I've been trying to do three things a week, but tomorrow I might be on YouTube. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty good. So again... I have this one. I'm going to make, instead of dipping directly, I'm going to just dip from the lid. If you don't already have a giant puddle there, like I do, what you do is you kind of close it, give it a squeeze, and then it'll create this puddle for you to use, okay? So I'm going to, again, I'll make sure my, my pen is really clean. And I'm going to add a little water to this because I don't want it to be too dark. So I'm definitely diluting this some. And then we'll see what this looks like, okay? So we'll just go real lightly. Go on the inside and just start, again with the watercolor you just kind of want to remember that you can always add more you can take it away while it's wet but that's about it okay make a little bit darker here with our edge just right there and if you'll notice when you wet something on this so when you start dry and I apologize if my head is in the screen I'm hoping it's not when you start dry Take it off. This is this paper towel isn't even completely dry. It is a little bit damp. When you go back again, it will kind of bleed out. You can see it bleeding to where the wet already was, which is kind of cool about the watercolor. So that's how you get your layers on there, okay, of dark. So you can add this in. Add in your truck panel, the door panel. Just like that. I think I completely covered up the door handle there. And then when you go back, this is really good with the ink for this because, because it does dry fairly quickly. And this ink is a beautiful color for this. So I'm going to just, I have, you know, see how infrequently I'm re-inking. And it's mostly because of the color of, you know, the depth of the Dapper Denim ink. Bring that in. Go straight across. I will say thus far, I think this is, uh, just want to add a little darker color there to the top. I think this is definitely a much more blendable color for me versus the brush show. 
and it could just be that maybe I am uh, I've been doing this for a while now here as in time wise today so I'm feeling more comfortable with it so it may just be that you need to see what it is you want to do with it what you like better same thing with the Stamparatus. You know, you're going to you're gonna like it. You're going to learn things about it where you're like, okay, i got to modify this or change that or I don't really like the way that this works, so make sure I don't use this spot. And that's with any tool. So this looks way cooler to me. So I would say, and I'm going to just hold these up because, again, I don't want to keep you guys on here all day. I'm going to hold these together. So this is watercolor paper with ink. So this is beautiful. This blends way more beautifully than I would have expected it to. And and really, again, I've always told you guys, I will if nothing else, I am honest. This looks much better than I thought it would. It looks equally as beautiful as the watercolor ink, really. And that is truly my opinion because I know sometimes when you see something on video, you're kind of like, "Well, it looks really nice." This looks nice. This looks better because you can still slightly see the lines. And granted, I'm nowhere near finished coloring this in. I will finish this when we are um, done today. And I will say it looks worlds better. And it could just be because of the colors or the colors that I chose. Maybe I should have colored this with the brush o in the blue to start with. But I think it looks much better. And again, this is also in Thick Whisper White with the watercolor paper. Now, you remember, watercolor paper is going to be more of a vanilla base. Um, so... <sighs> It's it's going to look different on white versus on the vanilla, but I think it looks really, really pretty, both of these. And I really do like the watercolor paper. I know it is, you know, it comes in a smaller pack and it is a little bit more expensive, but it really does look a lot nicer. This could just be my color combo. So I think before I would say I really don't like brush out, I think I need to do this over again with blue instead of a red truck and see how it looks instead. But I am going to finish this because this looks really, really pretty. I think these would make some lovely cards. I apologize I'm not finishing them now with watercoloring. Like I said, you definitely kind of want to let it go before you finish it. But what I could do is um, I'm going to keep one of these undone, and then tomorrow I will go on to YouTube. So if you guys haven't um, followed me already, you can follow me as well on YouTube. haven't been doing as many YouTubes live, but I'm going to do one tomorrow. I did one last Thursday as well. So tomorrow um, on YouTube, I can't really say exactly what time. Probably I'm thinking around 9-ish or so. Um, you can follow me there. It is Rach the Stamper. Rachel Rife. Rach the Stamper is my YouTube um handle I guess you call it I don't even know what you call it but you can follow me as well I will not finish one of these and we'll put one of them together tomorrow kind of like a to be continued from the Facebook but I hope this has given you guys a little bit of uh inspiration with the no line watercoloring and a thank you to whoever it was that suggested me to do this because I have seen a lot of people um I do follow a lot of people on YouTube specifically that, you know, Christina Werner and Jennifer McGuire, and they do a lot of watercoloring, no line watercoloring. I mean, Christina Werner is extremely talented in what she can make. And again, she can just start painting something. And it looks amazing. I wish I had that amount of talent, but I think I did fairly good today considering, especially with the tree. I really love this lovely as a tree. And, you know, I know that they've said before that they're not planning on getting rid of it. I hope that that is true, that they don't get rid of it because this is a beautiful stamp set for those of you that need like a thinking of you card or Father's Day or with sympathy. I mean, even the truck could be used as any of those kind of things. So if you guys don't have a catalog, I would love to send you one. It is free. Just send me your full mailing address, um, including your zip code. I can send you one out. The new catalog with the Stamparatus, a few other people have asked about that. If you have not gotten this on pre-order thus far, which will be, I believe it's April, you can't get it until the new catalog comes out. They did two pre-orders, one in November and then one in January, and now you just have to wait for the annual catalog, which won't go live until June 3rd of 2018. So that's when the brand new annual catalog with, you know, the new in colors that'll be coming, which we don't know what they are, but I'm so excited, I can't wait, and um, retiring stamp sets. As soon as we find that out, I will absolutely share that with you. But again, I just want to tell you guys, if you have something that you want, get it now before there's a rush and you end up missing it because the in color things will be gone some of the stamp sets will retire and honestly i have no clue as to which ones they may be so if there's something you really want get it now um the february hostess code is pinned to the top of the page that is valid through today it ends today and then there'll be a new one starting tomorrow march 1st um if there's anything you guys want to know, any questions that you have, please feel free to shoot me an email, rachethestamper at gmail.com. I'd be happy to help you and get you an answer. And if I can't find it, I will search for it and do my best to answer you. 
And uh, as always, if you haven't, I would love for you to subscribe and to share. I really, really appreciate this. I hope you catch me tomorrow too, Linda. And you, Donna. I know you're on there somewhere, so I'm pretty sure you're on um, YouTube as well. And we'll try and do, um, I'm going to try and do another Stamparatus tips and techniques thing and get some other stuff squared away. And I'll finish these cards, post them on the blog. I might try and redo the brush card with a less clown car color. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks guys as always for joining i really appreciate it if you haven't already please follow me on youtube or on facebook here and then on youtube at reach the stamper as well i hope you guys have an awesome day and i hope you will give this a try and i'd love to see your videos or your um cards that you finish with it so thanks for watching see you tomorrow